binary tree. Well, what do I say about it? This is such an interesting and a very important data structure. And due to this, I have often seen that interviewers will come up with some random questions and they just want to test out how well do you actually understand this data structure. They want to make sure that you are not just mugging up every concept. They want to feel that, okay, you know how it works and how it behaves. So one of the questions that I have found is to find the average of each level in a binary tree. And of course, this question is also available on lead code. So in this question, we will be discussing actually that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will describe you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test case. Next, we will see how this problem actually behaves and what do you need to do to arrive at an optimal solution. Going forward, we will do a dry run of the code as usual so that you understand how all of this is actually working. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, let us quickly try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a binary tree. That means each node has two child nodes, correct? And you have to return me the average value of nodes in each level, right? So let us say I have the sample binary tree in front of me. The only thing you need to know is what is actually a level. So for example, in this binary tree, this is level one, then this is level two, this is level three, and then this is level four, correct? And what you need to tell me is what is the average value of the integers at each of these levels? So for example, at level one, you only have one value, right? So the average value would be two divided by one and that is two, correct? If we go on to level two, you have two elements, eight and four, right? So the average value would be eight plus four divided by two, right? And that will give you six, correct? Similarly, you have the third level and the values are three, seven and one. So that would be 11 divided by three and that is equal to 3.6. And last, you only have one node and that is six, correct? So the average value for level four would be six divided by one and that is equal to six. So you can see that all of these values are the average values at each level, correct? In this question, you just have to return a list of all of these values in a double representation. So when you would return the result, it would look something like this, right? And this will be your answer. Now, if the problem statement is clear to you and you want to try it out on your own, that's perfect. Try it out first. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. As soon as you start solving this problem, one thing becomes very, very obvious. You need to figure out a way how you can travel individual level one at a time, right? What you will do is first travel the first level, then move on to level two, then level three, and then level four, and then so on, correct? So this is actually the concept of level order traversal. If you're new to level order traversal, I would highly recommend you to check out my video on level order traversal first, because that is the basic concept on which this problem works. So I will not go into a lot of depth about how level order traversal works, but in this problem specifically, what we need to focus is how do you identify that, okay, a level has ended. A level order traversal will simply mean that, okay, you first get two, then eight, then four, then three, right? But how do you know that after two, the level ends, after four, the level ends, and after one, the level ends, correct? So in this problem, we will be only focusing on that part. To start things off, let us first of all take up our queue data structure that will be used to perform a level order traversal. So I have my queue with me where all the elements will go in from this side and they will come out from the other end, right? Because of first in first out. Now there is a very neat trick which you can use to identify all of the levels. What we're gonna do is we get the first element and that is two, right? I will put my two in the queue and I will also insert a null pointer. What this null pointer will tell me that, okay, as soon as I get a null, that ends a level. So now start your level order traversal. What is the first element that you get? You get the element two, right? So what I will do is I will start defining levels over here. Level one has the element two, right? Now, what do you do? You will see how many children the node two has, correct? Two has the child eight and four. So following the level order traversal, I will add eight in my queue and then I will add four in my queue and two will be removed from the queue, correct? As soon as you look at the next element in the queue, 
you see a null over here, right? And this is the interesting part. As soon as you see a null, this means that you have completed one level. So I will complete a level and what I will do is I will take this null and put it in the next position that the queue is available. So gradually what you will see is this null will determine where a level is ending. Now move on with our queue. You pop the next element and that is 8, right? As soon as you get a 8, this is the next level, correct? So you get a 8 and then what you're going to do? You will add all the children of 8 to your queue. So I'm going to add 3 and then 7. This completes the work of 8, so I will remove it from my queue, right? Moving on, what is the next element that I have? I have the element 4. And to process it, what I will do is, I will add all of its children to my queue. As soon as I add it, I add 1 in my queue over here. And we have processed 4, so I am going to remove it. Move ahead now. What do you see again? You see a null. And what does null mean? A null simply means that a level has been completed. So you can see level 2 has also been completed. What I will do now is I will take this null and put it in the next element of the queue, right? So now you can see how this process will follow along, right? In the next iteration, I will get a 3. So this will tell me level 3 and I will get 3, 7 and 1 over here. And then eventually when all of these elements have been popped out, I am left with a null again. And this null will once again define the end of level 3. Try to work out how 6 will go into level 4 on your own. Do it as an exercise and you will understand how this is working. So now you can start to see how things are becoming easy. You are getting all of the individual levels one by one, right? All you need to do is just keep on adding all of these elements and then you can simply get the average. Based on this logic, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how all of this is actually working in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have the same sample binary tree with me and we will try to perform a level order traversal to get the average of all levels, right? Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with our implementation, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a level queue. So in this queue, we will store all the elements one by one. And what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we add the root node and also add a null because root is the only node which will always have one level, correct? So I have two and a null in my queue, correct? In the next step, I will initialize an average list that will store all of my average at each level. Moving on, I start a while loop where I will begin processing this queue. So I will start to take elements one by one and then see if they have child nodes. And for each level, what do we do? We initialize the sum to zero and this nodes value will keep a count of how many nodes are there at each level. Now comes the interesting part. I will start a while loop that will begin processing each element of the queue. So what I do is I take out the first element and that is two, right? And then what I do is I add it to my sum variable and I increment the count of nodes. So this is how I'm managing. Okay, this is the sum and this is the count. As a next step, what do I have to do? I have to add both the left child and the right child to my queue. So this will add eight and four to my queue, right? When this loop runs again, two has been removed, right? What I have is I have a null in my queue. And what does null mean? Null means an end of a level. As soon as this level ends, what I'm going to do is I will take this null and add it to the back of the queue again. And this is happening right over here. Once I have done this, I know that I have completed a level. So I'll just add whatever the average is to my average list. So for our first case, since the only element present is two, so I will add 2.0 to my list. This loop will run again. And this time I will be processing four and eight. So I know that 6.0 will get added in my average list, right? This will continue to happen and at the end, we will return this average list as an answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n, where n is the total number of nodes in the binary tree. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n. That is because we need to maintain a queue where we are storing all of our nodes. 
So this Q can be as large as the total number of nodes in your binary tree. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see a problem around tree traversal, especially binary trees, know that there are majorly three or four forms of traversal. That is the pre-order traversal, post-order traversal, level order traversal, and the in-order traversal, right? And all of them have their own use cases. If it is a binary search tree, an in-order traversal will give you all the elements in a sorted order. And similarly, in a level order traversal, you can go on to each element level by level. So with this, you can see that how many variations of problems you can form, right? With a level order traversal, someone can ask you, okay, how many levels are there? They can ask you, okay, what is the left view of the tree? That will be all the first elements in every level, right? What is the right view of the tree? That will be all the elements at the end of each level, correct? So you can see that how some of the basic concept can translate into so many problems. That is why I always emphasize on, okay, just clarify the concept first. If the underlying concept is clear to you, then it does not matter what the problem is because all the problems are built on top of each other, right? What I want you to do right now is in the comment section below, tell me one such question that has been derived from another one. For example, the height of a binary tree, correct? And also tell me if you faced any problems during this video. What do you want me to improve? Tell me everything and I would love to help you all of out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can try to simplify these concepts for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.